Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thank you very much for spinning that YouTube dial in my direction and watching and joining me as I explore the wide world of pens. And you see in front of you three pens, which hopefully you recognize. Jinhao X159s. Yes, I now actually have five of them. I bought two additional ones in the black and silver. I call it Model 1. And then I got a red and a blue one with gold trim. And I'm calling that Model 2. And we'll take a look at the subtle changes that Jin Hao made between what I call these two models. And I'm impressed with some of the changes that they've made. It's interesting to watch a pen evolve. And I'm very happy to be fortunate enough to be able to explore, expand, and put them into a collection. Who knows, 100 years from now, if someone unearths my time capsule, they'll go, hmm, interesting series of pens. Who knows? But I digress. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. The blue color seems to be coming across much more of a, of a blue color than it does to my eyes. To my eyes, it's a, a dark blue. And the red is just a nice red. They pick some really good colors, I think. So let's compare the red one and the black one because that's going to be easier to distinguish. One thing we'll notice right away is the cap band is slightly larger. The engraving is also larger, making it easier to read. We flip around to the back, we'll see that now it's much easier to distinguish the X159 in the Model 2. The other thing is, if we uncap it, it takes one, two, and a quarter turns. That's a big improvement, because the original one, we'll call it Model 1, takes one, two, almost three turns. So they took three quarters of a turn off of that, and that's great. I didn't notice any other major differences, but like I said, some subtle changes that I think really make the pen even nicer than it was before. And the black one has been inked up since I got it with uh, the Pen BBS Purple City, so it's a glitter ink, and it writes consistently well day in and day out. Some people have uh, talked about how Sometimes the nib and feed are not aligned. You know, this is as received, and they're pretty close. They're not perfect, but, you know, a little movement, and you can kind of get them aligned. But to me, that's not that critical. It writes fine. And it's nice two-tone nib. That's also a, a new addition, but then it's the gold trim. But it's still... Gives the pen a little bit more of a classy upscale look than the monotone, silver tone nib in the original version. So you may say that's a nice looking dark red in the X159 Model 2. And I'll say that the Chinese pen makers have been kind of on a roll on a very nice red. Here's the Jinhao 80. And here's the Mahjong P136, which is even a darker more to me interesting red you know it's just a, a nice play on the color you got gold trim silver trim gold trim so you get to see the variety that is available so since it's a short video let's do some writing i've read uh, a number of comments but they are in the minority about people not liking how this pen writes but I like it, and so do a lot of other people. And when I went to the Pelican Hub, everybody who wrote with it enjoyed the pen. And to me, that's a good sign. If it's great in the hand, that number eight nib really complements the size of the pen. Yeah, the two-tone one really looks nice. And I have an ink in here, which is not the easiest and safest ink to use, and it's worked very, very well. I don't know whether you can see if there's any... Yeah, there's some glitter there stuck on the feed. You know, a lot of people don't like glittering because of that, but hey, it's fine with me because I enjoy the way it looks on paper. Hmm. 
Nice purple ink. And like I said, this is written great since day one. It may dry out a little bit, but I blame the glitter ink on that, but just a little bit of wetting and pfft, it's back writing. It really doesn't get starved. So we reached the end of this video. Hope it finds all of you safe, healthy, and happy. I want to thank all of you for watching. I'll give you a link to the full re my first review of the X159 if you want more details, dimensions, and all that other interesting stuff. But we're at the end of this video. And yeah, this fine nib makes me write small. So we're going to say bye. A lot of pens in the loop. Here's one that is coming up in review.